when no force is applied on the pedal, on the brake pedal, that's the brake pedal layer. When no force, sorry, wait a second. I started the recording. Oh, it's recording, I started the recording. Okay. Uh, when no force applied on the pad, uh, brake pedal of the of the lightweight uh, lightweight truck, the retainer spring BC with BAB, ah, that's the spring AB, keeps the pedal in contact with the smooth brake light switch at C. So I've got a switch here. That's a that's a, that's a switch here. So basically you've got a spring-loaded switch here, which is connected, which is the, the brake pedal is forcing it against the switch because of the spring here. If the force on the switch is F, so we know that the force being applied on the switch is F, determine the unstretched length of the spring if the stiffness of the spring is given here. So, let us see. If how are we are going to create the free body diagram of the brake pedal. So I will draw a brake pedal. That is my brake pedal. What forces I've got? At A, I've got a spring force. That is the spring force. I've got another force acting here because of this switch, and that is three Newton. And the whole brake pedal is pivoted, pin connected at D. So at D, it's pin connected, it's pivoted, so it means there's no reaction moment, but they will be reactive uh, forces. That I would say R X and R Y. It's my free body diagram, right? I have to put the dimensions apart from the dimension which I need to put it in. The forces are right or not? Think. Is my free depot diagram right? Uh, FS right direction menu. F, so again? FS would be in the right direction. Uh, FS. So, so you want to put FS here? Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, it won't mean, I, 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 I can, I can do that. Uh, I, 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 I can, I can, I can start my analysis by having FS in the right direction. I can do that. But common sense, and I will get the right answer. My answer will be negative, which tells me that the, the, the direction is opposite. So my answer will be right. I will get the right answer. But if I look at the diagram, it's a stretch of the spring. You can clearly imagine because it says here that it's forced against the switch. So it's pivoted here and it can rotate. So it's forced here. So it means that this is basically a pull force. If you will pull from here yeah. in this direction and pivoted at D, then you will have a, 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 a contact at the switch. Am I right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So therefore, uh, I am putting it here. But as I said, if I have it in the other direction, it doesn't matter. My answer will be negative, so that's fine. It will tell me that the direction is in the other direction. But because I put my FS towards here, I put my RX in this direction. Maybe the RX goes in this direction, I don't know, but I assumed it. 
But as I said, whatever direction you put in your free point diagram, stick to it, don't change it. The answer will tell you if you assumed it in the right direction or not. So gentlemen, give me the answer. I need the answer. What is the answer? I want the unstretched length of the spring. Find me, you've got two minutes to do this. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, in the free body diagram, why is the force uh, which is acting on the pet, uh, which is acting on C? Switch? Yeah, on switch. Why it is directed towards the brake pedal? So, I, 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 when I, when, when, when I, that's, that's why I'm putting this here. You, you look at the, uh, the, the dx and dy direction. When I draw the free point diagram, put it in the other way around. But then in this diagram, the force are in the other way around. It's in the opposite, some of the in the opposite direction. Doesn't matter, S stick to it. Put your equations. You can use either my uh, free point diagram or this one. You will get the same answer. That's what I'm trying to tell everyone. That whatever direction you think you is you may stick to it. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So what's the unstretched length? It's coming out to be seventy four millimeters. Yeah, let's see how much. 74 millimeters. 74 millimeters. Oh, wait. Um. It's 70.3. Yeah, um, I was like trying to get there right now, so I forgot to like put one value in. So is it, is it clear to everyone? Look, why why we are taking, we, we, we didn't start with, with some of all the force along X or some of all the force along Y. We started with moment at D. Because when you do moment at D, the unknown forces at D disappear. They don't appear in your equation. So it's a it's a it's an easy way out. Still, you can do some of all the first line along X and Y, but the, the process gets a bit lengthy. You will get the right answer, don't worry. But process will get a bit lengthy. So therefore, I always say that you got unknowns. Uh, and it is appearing on your FX and FY, uh, some of FX or FY equation. Then try to take moment at that point because then it will disappear. Is that clear to everyone? 
Yes, sir. Uh, sir, at the contact point of the uh, brake with the switch, uh, shouldn't there be a reaction force also, which prevents the brake pedal from uh, breaking the switch? Your, your F is the reaction force. Your F is the reaction force. I'm not. Look, when you draw the feedback diagram of the pedal, you don't make any other drawings, uh, any other component on it. I'm not putting any spring. There's no spring, but there's a spring force. There's no switch, but there's a reaction of the switch force on the pedal. Is, is that clear? Okay, sir. Yes. So remember, you, you, when you draw a feedback diagram of any component, just put all the forces on that component only. Um, sir, uh, there was one question over here. Like, yes. Did we point D specifically because this whole thing was rotating about point D? Uh, say, say again, sorry. Uh, did we take point D because the whole thing was rotating about point D? Because no, 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 no. I, I can take a moment at this point also. I will call it uh, J. I can take a moment, but it's useless. Why to take a moment at point J? I will take a moment at point D because at D I've got my DX which is unknown. I've yeah. got my DY which is unknown. So that's the right place to take the moment. Mm. I'm just taking the moment at D so that the DX and DY does not appear on my equation because both are unknown. Yeah, otherwise you'd have oh. to get those. Oh, you can, you can go for some of all the force along X, which means then you will have a component of FS, you will have component of the switch, and you will have DX. Now, now your DX is unknown, your D, uh, your FS is unknown. I can then do some of all the force along Y, and then I look at Y, I've got my DX, and I, sorry, DY, and I've got my F, component of F. I can find my F, but it's useless. I, I want to know Fs. So I can do this, some of all long X, some of all long Y, and then try to solve it. And if I cannot solve it, I'll take a moment at point D, and then I'll get my question out. So, so it's, it's, it's up to you. you. You can take the lengthy route by students always starting from some for the post long x and then y and then taking moments but if you look at the at the at the problem and you analyze it first and then you will realize that taking moment at d is more beneficial and you you, you will have less calculation yes 